thank you. Who said you could stop clapping? <laughs> oh, thanks. Take your seats. God bless you. Great to be here in Stanthorpe again tonight. Where are we? Toowoomba, the, the, the jewel of the... Thank you. That was great tonight. Love that. It was fantastic. And uh, I'm glad you came out. I want to share something that I, I believe can help you. Or the, the two morning services, if you weren't here, I, I shared a, a word that God put on my heart for 2018. I, I'm blessed and called to travel the nations and blow a trumpet. And this year's word that God said, go tell the church, uh, was simply prepare for a God shift. Prepare for a God shift. So I, I shared in both services a different aspect of that. It simply is that God has shifted and changed the rules of the game and nothing's going to be the same. When God shifts, we've got to move to where God shifted to and He's always in a place that demands great miracles. There's a battle to break through, but He says, oh Lord, I'll fix that up for you. If you dare to believe and rise up in faith and break through, we're going to see the, the, the greatest harvest, the most amazing blessings uh, that we've ever seen in our life. That's the, that's the message that I'm sharing and declaring everywhere. And so tonight I want to address that in uh, that, okay, we've got to, you know, what does that mean? We've got to rise up in faith and, you know, uh, if there's, where's this battle line and the prize and the inheritance? What does that all mean? Well, I think it means that you've got to get your heart in a place where you simply want to be where God is and God is in the harvest. He wants to bring in the greatest harvest of souls that we've ever seen in history. And so somehow there has to be an army of people like you and I that don't just go to church on Sunday and then lock ourselves away and watch TV the rest of the week. There's got to be a people that are actioned, energized by God to believe that Monday through Saturday and Sunday, we're going to have the capacity to actually touch people with the power of God and see things change. That's called miracles. The moment you say you can do miracles, a lot of people turn off. And so tonight I want to share just a few simple thoughts on how you can rise up in this season to be used of God and come into the day of your destiny and the day of God's power. I want to talk to you on mustard seed faith. Or another title of this message could be, why couldn't I do that? That's the greatest question asked in the Christian church. Why can't I do that? I pray. Why didn't it happen for me? Well, I want to answer that question for you tonight. Because uh, for me, it's very important that we understand God wants to use you to be a blessing and to touch people in your world. And uh, so you've got to believe that that's possible. Let's have a look at this scripture in Matthew 17, verse 19. And it says this, Then the disciples came to Jesus privately. They were embarrassed. It didn't work. And they asked him and said, Why couldn't we? Why could we not? And then it goes on, why couldn't we cast the, the devil out of that person, that oppressed person? And they're asking the question that you will have asked, whether specifically, but in your life, so many people are plagued by this. Why can't I do that? Why can't? And it goes on, why could we not? And Jesus said to them, he didn't mess around. He went, bang, because of your unbelief. Well, could you be a bit more specific, Jesus? He, can't get, he just went for them. Why couldn't we do that? We're having a go because of your unbelief. That's become a mantra with, uh, with nasty people in the church. 
Someone doesn't get healed. Oh, they didn't have enough faith. You know what I'm saying? That's so nasty. And they sort of get it out of this. Jesus said that. It's just because of your unbelief you didn't, you couldn't. And he goes on. But Jesus immediately, he said, because of your unbelief, but now I'm going to tell you how to believe. See, they were on a learning curve and Jesus wanted them to get it because they were going to be left in charge of the whole operation pretty soon. And he, he went on, how, why couldn't we do, do it? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief, but assuredly I say this to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, tiny little seed. Remember one preacher uh, saying that he was showing his congregation a mustard seed. Someone came up and <laughs> breathed a bit heavy and it was gone. It's t so tiny. And Jesus is using that illustration for that purpose. People think you've got to be a certain personality or a style or a ministry gift to be able to be used of God. Well, Jesus is showing that's not true. If you've got faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Tiny mustard seed. Well, that hasn't really helped me. That's probably made it harder. I still don't know how to believe. You know, for me, I grew up in church. My dad was a preacher. And from my earliest days, most of the ministry and songs were around, just believe, you know, keep believing. Believe in God. I remember when I was, I don't know, maybe nine. I, I forget what age, but I was young. And I, I somehow started to believe God. I said, I'm going to believe God for a guitar. I wanted to be a rock guitarist. I used to pray, dear, dear Lord, I'll never play rock and roll on this guitar if you give me one. He probably knew I, w I wasn't going to honor my word. And so, but I never got one. I used to go to my dad and I'd say, I, I'm, I'm believing God for a guitar. How many of you know faith is in the telling? The more people you tell, tell the more chance you've got. And so I thought, <laughs> I'm praying to God, but I'll tell my dad. He's got the money. And so I say, say to my dad, I'm praying. Dad, I'm believing God for a guitar. I want to lead worship. And uh, it never happened. And all my dad used to say is just keep believing. I could just keep believing. I came to hate that term. When you see really sick people and some idiot from church goes to visit them and that's the best they can say. Just keep believing. It's sort of, maybe it's not offensive to you, but it is to me because I've heard it all of my life. Believing for a guitar. When I was 12, I lived in, my dad moved to New Zealand, eh, bro? <laughs> we moved to New Zealand and we lived with an old 80-year-old man on his own in a little tenement house and my dad went traveling in ministry. And uh, while we were there, uh, th there were six kids, mum and dad and six kids living with this poor old man. And uh, while we were there, my mother died. We woke up one morning, or I did, just as the ambulance was leaving, and she'd, uh, she'd bled to death. She had an eptopic pregnancy. Do you know what that is? It's one that doesn't work. It, uh, anyway. And so it burst and she bled to death. They found her on the top little landing, took her to hospital and uh, rang Pastor Brian Houston's father, who, who we were based with in Wellington, New Zealand, uh, Lower Hutt. And uh, Frank got the church praying. He raced down the hospital. And when he got there, um, they said to him, sorry, Reverend, but Mrs. Penny has already passed away. 
uh, they're just doing some stuff now. And he said, I didn't come here to get a report. I came here to pray for her. And so he barged in and prayed for my mum and raised her from the dead. Isn't that incredible? She was probably uh, mid-30s. Yeah, that's worth a clap. <laughs> raised her from the dead. She lived well into her 80s after that. It's amazing. She used to come up and stay. She actually died up on the sunny coast with us in her 80s, came up to visit. I don't know whether it was Marion's cooking or what it was. <laughs> I'm a, I may be walking home. <laughs> but the point, I got off the track. The point is this, when I got up, I'm about a 12-year-old. My mum's taken off in the hospital, uh, in the ambulance to the hospital, and I said to the old guy, he's the only one there. My dad was away on a ministry trip. I said, what, what's going to happen? And he said the same thing. I'm 12. Just only believe. Only believe. Well, that time when we hear that my mum's been raised from the dead, I thought someone must have been believing because it wasn't me because I don't know how to do it. And so all my life growing up in ministry, this has always been a challenge how to believe. I remember when I was probably in my 20s, uh, I was a youth pastor and my dad was an evangelist and he was up in Queensland somewhere, maybe Gympie or somewhere up there doing some meetings and he had an altar call going and one guy on the altar call began to manifest, just go crazy. My dad said to me, take him out the back and deal with him. And so I was looking for a piece of timber. And he, he said, no, not that. He said, take him out the back and look after him. So we went out, another guy came with me. We went out the back and uh, then we thought, well, we've got to do something. So in Jesus' name and started to try and, you know, huff and puff. And, uh, but all of a sudden this guy went as stiff as a board. He was leaning on a thing. He went as stiff as a board, just slid down on the floor. Bang, 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 bang. On the floor. And the guy with me said, we've lost him. <laughs> He's gone. And I said to the guy, I'm out of here. <laughs> so we just left him there. <laughs> Locked the door, left him there. He's on the floor, stiff as a board. He came out later, an hour later or something, and, you know, obviously returned to, to sender. But the same thing, here I am uh, in ministry now and I still haven't got a clue. I went out to my dad and said, hey, hey, you know, we lost that guy. He was gone for an hour. What was that all about? We couldn't get, we couldn't help him, couldn't get the devil out of him. And uh, why, why not? My dad said exactly the same thing. You got to believe. You got to believe. And I thought, thanks for nothing. Here I'm 20, mid-20s, and I'm still hearing the same little mantra. you just got to believe. Well, that's not good enough for me. I need to know what to believe and how to believe. Maybe I'm simple, but I, so I've, I want to give you the four things you've got to believe to help you just get, and then we're going to pray for miracles tonight in this place. It's very simple. This is my theology for believing. My four steps to increasing my faith. Write down number one. My four steps to increasing my faith. Number one is agreement. I believe God has given me faith. If you don't believe that, you're not born again. You're not a Christian. If, if someone comes to you and says, oh, I'm a Christian, but I, can't, I, I haven't got any faith. I say, well, you're not a Christian. When you receive Jesus Christ into your life, He comes in and changes everything and He gives to you the gift of faith. There's a, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. 
yet not I, but Christ. My life, new life is by Christ who lives within me. I forget what it says of it. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If you're born again, if you're a Christian, God has given you the gift of faith. You've got faith. You've got to, if you want to believe and see anything happen that's supernatural and out of the ordinary, you've got to agree with God. He's given you faith. There's a scripture here in Ephesians 2, 8. Ephesians 2, verse 8. It says, for by grace are you saved, you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. This is the first thing you have to do to believe, to see miracles. You've got to agree with God. I agree God has given me faith. It's His gift to me. I didn't earn it. I didn't beg for it. I didn't go looking for it. I received Jesus and uh, in Him, I received the gift of faith to believe for the impossible. Can you say amen? amen? So the first thing we do, I agree with God. He has given me faith. I go to your pastor and say, I haven't got faith to believe. Well, I would say you haven't got Christ in your heart. You have to dare to agree, God has given me faith. That's the first step in believing. If you can't believe that, you can't believe for anything. You'll be relegated to the mundane life of wandering meaninglessly through the dust of defeat. I agree God has given me faith. Can you say that with me tonight? I agree God has given me faith. I can feel the temperature rising already. We're on a good path here. The second one. Firstly, agreement. The second one, acceptance. You have to accept from God's Word and God's promise, you have sufficient faith, acceptance. Next. I believe I have sufficient faith to move my mountain. Isn't that what Jesus was teaching them? you got faith and all you need is a mustard seed. You can move a mountain. Nothing will be impossible to you. You just have to believe. You've just got to lock in on some of the simple mechanisms of believing so that when you get to a circumstance, you're not plagued by unbelief. I believe God has given me faith. Secondly, I accept that I have sufficient faith for my mountain, my challenge, my situation that's before me, see some things change in my life. Too many people want mountain-sized faith to move a mustard seed. Oh, they do. And you know, God increased my faith. He's, that's why Jesus taught on this. That's how the disciples were thinking. And Jesus is a special, he's a freak. He's a special gifted, you know, God person. We haven't got that kind of faith. You hear people say it all the time. Man, I wish I had the faith of that evangelist or that preacher. Or Listen, Jesus is debunking that. He's telling his disciples, you don't need a mountain of faith. All you need is a mustard seed, but you've got to accept that you've got sufficient faith to do the impossible. And the way you talk reinforces that or destroys it. I, I, don't, I, I, really can't, I really can't get my head around that. I don't think I can. I won't be able to do that. Hear what I'm saying? All you're doing is... <laughs> blowing the mustard seed of faith away. You've got to accept that God has put within you sufficient faith to do the impossible. Faith is not a personality trait. Well, he's a strong personality. It's a gift from God. Faith is not a ministry gift. Some preachers have a gift of faith only because they pressed into God and developed it. But Jesus is debunking that because uh, so many people believe and teach that. He's saying, listen, this is for all of us to see 
miracles. All you need is a mustard seed. If you'll accept and believe you've got sufficient faith, then God can do the impossible in and through you. Number three. And then the third one. There's adjustment. Oh, this is a challenge. Put up the next statement. I believe I can remove doubt and unbelief from my thoughts. You've got to believe this if you're ever going to believe God. I believe that I can remove thoughts of doubt, fear, unbelief from my mind. I believe that. I'm not going to hide behind weakness. I'm not going to claim that it's impossible to do that because the Bible teaches the opposite. In Romans 4 verse 16, Romans 4 verse 16, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, not works, but grace, so that the promise might be sure to all. The promises of God are not for a select few. The promises of God are sure to all. Otherwise, they wouldn't be of grace. They'd be of ability and status and calling and gifting, whatever. No, they're of grace. So that the promises of God in the Bible are sure to all. I love that. And so... When I meditate on God's Word, I adjust my thoughts. I believe I can adjust my thoughts. Second Corinthians says, taking every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ's plan for your life. You can control your thoughts. You can not go down the path of fear, doubt, and negativity. For me, in my mind, which is an unusual compilation of crazy, but in my mind, I have to tell myself all the time, don't go there. When tempting thoughts come, don't go there. Don't follow them. They're not on the paths of righteousness. Don't go there in your thoughts. When thoughts of fear, doubt and unbelief come, don't follow them. They're, kind of, they're going to take you down a dark alley a dismal, dark place. Just don't go there. Start to tell yourself that all the time. When Because thoughts come. We all have them. There's nothing wrong with that. It's what you do with them that makes the difference. And so I, I've, I've learned that I, I believe I can control and adjust my thoughts. I believe I can adjust who I am and the thoughts I think to believe God for great things. Some of you have been condemned and maybe condemn yourselves because you've let the enemy have a field day in your mind with all kinds of negativity and doubt and depression and isolation and rejection and fear, all those negatives that come against us the stop us from believing that God can make a difference. I believe God's given me faith. I believe I have sufficient faith to see God do amazing things. But thirdly, I believe that I can take control of my thoughts to line up with what God's promising me because His promises are sure to all of us. I believe that. And so number four is action. I agree God's given me faith. I accept that gift of faith and, and that there's sufficient for me to overcome. I then deal with my soul, my, my mind. I believe I can control my soul to line up with the promises of God. And then lastly, action. I believe that my actions begin my miracle. Arise. And as they went, they were healed. Get up. He took him by the hand and lifted him up. I believe my actions determine my miracle. Romans 4.20, he did not waver at the promise of God, 
through unbelief. He didn't waver at the promise of God. Didn't let his negative thoughts, you're a hundred, mate. This is Abraham at a hundred. The angel saying, you can have a kid. How many of you know his mind would be flooded? Even if I, I can get things to work. What about the old woman? So he's got all these thoughts going on. And the Bible says this about Abraham. He brought forth the son of promise. He did not waver. He controlled his thoughts at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Marion was sick for two years from the end of 2015 uh, to the start of this year. And the surgeon has said it. Uh, she, she was diagnosed with bowel cancer, has had operations, chemo, radiation, been quite sick for two years. And so we're, we're, we're believing God. God, you've got to help us. And, uh, and one of the things that we agreed to do, because I, I believe God's given me faith, I believe we've got enough faith to believe God to see something change. I believe if we can keep our thoughts focused on the promises of God, it can work. And then the last one is I believe that according to our actions, the miracle is released. And so we agreed when we heard that uh, prognosis, we're going to have to take some action somehow, an action of faith. <clears throat> and so what we did, we simply decided we're going to have communion every day together as our action of faith, reminding God of His promises through Jesus Christ and giving Him glory. So every morning or at night, if we, we weren't uh, together in the morning or whatever, but every day we were together when I wasn't away traveling, we would have communion and simply give thanks to God. We dare to believe we're not going to waver at the promise. We wanted to waver. Everything said waver. But we refused to waver and we would have communion together and say, God, this is our action of faith, giving you glory that you can do. The Here she is now. The doctors have said it's all gone and you, you can get on with life and live life. To That's incredible. <coughs> so <coughs> let me just bring the... I think they've got the conclusion. of Put the conclusion up, the last big statements. Here we go. Here they are. This is how I have learned to believe. I agree with God. He has given me faith. I accept that I've got sufficient. The guy down the road hasn't got more than me and I haven't got enough. I accept I've got sufficient. Third one, adjustment. I'm going to think faith thoughts on the promises of God. And the last one, action, I'm going to take some faith steps in Jesus' name. I've preached tonight to create an environment for miracles. I want you to take this home and meditate on it. It's very simple, but it needs to be because the devil tries to make everything complicated. But faith and believing God is very simple. I want you to go home and meditate on those four simple functions of believing. Let's stand together tonight. I'm just, we're going to ask God to touch people here tonight. I believe God's here. I believe God has given you and I faith. I believe we have sufficient faith to see God do something out of the ordinary. I believe that people here are right now saying, I'm not going to think those thoughts of fear, doubt, and unbelief. I'm not going to do that. And the last one is, uh, I'm going to act right now and believe God for a miracle. All I want to do tonight is every person here is believing God in some area of your life for a miracle. I want you to lift your hand just where you are. <coughs> and if there's someone... <coughs> Someone near you, behind you, alongside, just reach and put your hand on someone with their hand up. That's it. Just put your hand on somebody, on their shoulder, and we're just agreeing together. You've got faith, I've got faith. We've got enough to see God do something. Right now in this moment, I'm not doubting. 
I'm just believing that Steve's preached faith into the house and God's here. And we're, the, our action is we're reaching out to God right now. While your hand's raised, I want to pray the prayer of faith. The Bible says the prayer of faith shall save the sick and set people free. And Father, tonight in this place, there's good, godly people. And we're walking the journey of life with all its imperfections, its challenges, its oppositions, its attacks, and everything that we didn't expect to happen the way it did. But here tonight, we're saying that greater is He that's in us than he that's in the world. And we simply believe that Christ in me is the hope of glory. And we lay hands on one another right now to simply reassure and remind each other that God is here and that to bless. This is not your moment to beg. This is your moment to receive. And when you go from here, you go looking for the outworking of that which you reach for tonight in this place. God do miracles. In the name of Jesus, let healings flow. Let finances break forth. Let families be restored. Let people that are away from God be called into the ministry because it's on their life from an early age. And let tonight be a night of miracles. We go out of here giving glory to God because we dare to believe that the promises are sure to every one of us. In the name of Jesus, bless Bless, bless, and bless in Jesus' name and let the miracle power of God work upon you tonight. And everybody said, man, I love that. I love that. Give the Lord a hand. Then I want to do just one more thing real quick. I want to help people say yes to Jesus. In church, that's what we do. We love it the most. Helping people find Jesus Christ as their Saviour from sin. And all you have to do is say, yes, Jesus, you are the Son of God. Yes, you died on a cross for everybody. But, when, but whoever calls on your name individually shall be saved. I want to do that tonight. And the Holy Spirit's been working in this meeting to help you make that decision. To say yes to Jesus. Whether for the first time you've ever done that intentionally or whether you're coming back to God and the Holy Spirit's saying, put some things right. Bow your heads. I want everyone praying. I want to give people the opportunity of reaching out for a miracle right here tonight. If that's you in this place, you know the Holy Spirit's helping you to say yes to Jesus. I want you to lift your hand. Give me a wave. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Someone else, thank you. God bless you. Thank you. That's a thank you over there. God bless you. I want to say yes to Jesus. Someone else, let me see your hand before I pray. I love to help people say yes to Jesus. Somebody else, give me a wave. Steve, include me. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Someone else, here tonight, a miracle is about to happen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Awesome. Let me pray. Join with me in prayer as I pray for those that raise their hands. Dear Heavenly Father, thank You for sending Your Son Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary because You loved us so much. Lord Jesus, thank You. You paid the price for our sin. Shed Your blood to break the power of sin and of the curse and the power of the devil. And Holy Spirit, thank You. You're here tonight to apply the blood of Jesus Christ to each one reaching out, saying yes to Jesus. Wash them clean. Destroy every trace of sin and set them free to be children of God and fill them with your Holy Spirit. Do a miracle right now on the inside so that they walk out of here as children of the living God. We thank you for the miracle in Jesus' Name. And everybody said, Amen. God love you, church. Thank you. Fantastic.